very proud because it's a very special day. Today we are opening the National Automotive Innovation Center, the NAIC, in the Professor Lord Bhattacharya building here at the campus at Warwick. At Czechoslovakia, Land Rover, we are very advanced in many areas of modern smart mobility, electrification, autonomous, assistant drive. But we also see that we cannot do everything on our own. And this facility on that campus gives us the opportunity, together with government, with regional leaders, with academia, but also with industry across many sectors, to define a new way to create cars which are absolutely zero emission, zero congestion capable, but also then create less accidents. We call it Destination Zero. And this kind of Destination Zero is its purpose. We and the next generation of engineers will pursue in this building. Vector. Vector is a very special project a spin-off of Jaguar Land Rover. And what we are doing here is we are creating a project with the agility of a startup and creating a new way for individual public transport, a new kind of car, with a new battery technology, a new space efficiency, but also prepared in the digital uh, uh, time with digital features prepared for autonomous drive integrated in the infrastructure. And there we also prepare a digital infrastructure here at the university. The next vehicles of Jaguar Land Rover will be all, up to a certain degree, electrified. So that the customer at the end of the day has got the choice, according to his mobility demands, to select the right vehicles with the right propulsion system for him. And the vehicles we are showing here are going even a step further going in the direction of destination zero, all be poor electric vehicles, but also prepared with complete new digital features, new digital architecture, and therefore can develop even more for a public transport system. At the end of the day, this is a building really created together with uh, Professor Lord Bhattacharya at the university, then the Chancellor of the WMG section of the University of Warwick. And this idea is really to bring together the regions, regional leaders, but also governmental bodies and then industry across sectors. And this can create, especially for the next generation also of engineers, a platform to develop more modern uh, concepts for a better life for a better society and at the end of the day for a by far better transport system. Well today we are at the National Automotive Innovation Centre. I'm standing in the research design studio, the design lab uh, studio and we're uh, formally unveiling the Lord Bhattacharya building and all that that stands for as uh, a full opening. Yeah, today we're showing the Project Vector concept vehicle and Project Vector has been a research project looking at the challenges of future mobility, the needs of private mobility, personal mobility, shared mobility and the problems of congestion, emissions and safety, getting around the city. Our aim is to improve the quality of urban living and we're looking at the whole mobility system from the product design, the digital ecosystem as well as the role of autonomy. Well, the National Automotive Innovation Centre has been conceived to house all the research activities required, really looking across all engineering disciplines and all uh, technology disciplines, to be able to bring together true innovation. And it does that by providing a focus for all of the different disciplines to have the right facilities to be able to make an entire car, design an entire car, and yet work together in close collaboration by uh, the way that the building is designed. Well, it, the NAIC facility is an amazing facility and it provides a real focus that draws people in. It's a fantastic place to work. It's a fantastic place to run projects. And I think this focus will accelerate 
the ability of networks of partners to work together. Well, the centre's designed with uh, each area, each discipline having the facilities it needs, and yet the centre area of the building is a commonly used area. And what I've experienced is that this really leads to collaboration in an informal way, but it also allows people to come together in the right team structures to be able to accelerate uh, the work and the quality of the work that they're doing. Well, NEIC being here in Warwickshire at Warwick University, we've clearly had a long-term relationship with Warwick University itself, but it's a perfect location in other regards as well. It's a focus for UK national investment in the Midlands Future Mobility Zone. The test site for connected and autonomous vehicles is therefore here, and it's a perfect area for us to base our future mobility research. It's a great milestone celebrating the opening of the NAIC right at the start of the 75th anniversary of Tata Motors. It uh, underlines our strong commitment to responsible and sustainable solutions for the long term of mobility, addressing the most urgent uh, needs of the hour. The NAIC is a very special setup for us. Because facing the challenge of what we call connected, electric, shared and safe, we bring the brightest minds under one roof here at the NAIC, aligning with academia on the one uh, and joining forces with our colleagues at Jaguar Land Rover to jointly develop uh, solutions which address the demand, but even more so which fit into the market reality of India. Bring the, the brightest minds from the academia and uh, from the research and development uh, and technology uh, of two large corporates as it is Jaguar Land Rover on the one, Tata Motors on the other side and being closely connected to the very active startup scene here in the UK and in general uh, in Europe is going to give us a unique opportunity to work on solutions which address the most urgent challenges as it is connected electric, shared and safety. And for India, it's not about going autonomous, but we have been actively participating in the UK driven auto drive as far as autonomous mobility is concerned. The learning translated into action as far as enhancement of safety is concerned, call it active driver assistance systems, advanced driver assistance systems, is something that really creates an on-ground impact uh, in India. And having all of these competences together here at Nike, it's uh, an important part of Tata Motors' uh, endeavor to, endeavor to address what we call SAS. We at Tata Motors got confronted by a change from a CapEx model to an OPEX model when tenders got launched uh, by the so-called state transport undertakings, tenders for electric buses. And we all of a sudden had to realize it's no longer about the bus that gets invested, it's about the intention to pay by use of a complete solution. From the infrastructure, electric charging points, to the product, uh, to the bus as such, all the way operating the bus and even selling the tickets on the bus while it's on duty. And you might ask the question, what is the link between the Tata universe uh, and today's opening of the NAIC? There's a very close link because lots of the elements which finally found their home in the Tata universe had actually started uh, and had their cradle here at uh, the NAIC, the electric powertrain solution, the question of charging infrastructure for the future. And I do recall one day we were sitting here uh, and we said which of the components are to be considered core in order to have highest local added value in India to really take India to the next level, not only to do some electrification for India, to possibly establish India as a hub for electric uh, solutions, not electric mobility, electric mobility solutions, so going beyond, again, the vehicle as such, and getting ready for the export of complete, uh, for the export, uh, of complete solutions. What is the future of mobility? It's about responsible and sustainable solutions. How do we normally express the challenge of responsible and sustainable solutions? 
it's not just e-mobility. It's a combination, as far as future technologies is concerned, related to connected, electric, shared, and safety. Under the umbrella of NEIC, you find a dedicated space for all of these future disruptive technologies. You find the required uh, laboratory space that's needed to actually develop the solutions and to provide a proof of concept. And at the same point of time, in close collaboration between what takes place in the research and technology phase at the NAIC, being closely connected to the home base of Tata Motors in India, trying to seek right from the beginning for the opportunity to localize these components and to make it at the same point of time where as we bring the technology to India to make it affordable. The Indian market is highly competitive, but just being competitive doesn't mean that it, do, that it does not need uh, all the future technologies uh, in an affordable envelope so that we can really bring it uh, to the customers and that we can, chart, that we can change uh, the structure uh, of mobility on the Indian roads. What really drives technology? It's the people. And it's the way you actually connect academia with the professionals uh, in the particular industry, in our case, in the automotive industry. Ideally, as it was the vision of late Professor Lord Bhattacharya, to bring all of them under one roof. In order to force them literally speaking, to work together as closest as possible, to actually bring the input from the academia uh, into the business, in order to ensure that everything that comes from the academia is a fresh and new thought, possibly out of the box as far as the initial thinking of, is it customer relevant? Can it be afforded by the customers? Does it really provide the answer of the most needed questions uh, of the industry to immediately sound uh, these kind of ideas uh, with the operational, with the business professionals to see where to put priorities. And I think NEIC has exactly become the home of this very early thought process uh, of uh, Professor Lord Bhattacharya. Because he managed with this building uh, to get uh, a huge brain pool under one umbrella, while at the same point of time being deeply rooted not only in trust in academia, but also in the business. Uh, to really create something that's relevant, something that can actually be uh, commercialized, as we usually call it, uh, and something that can provide answers uh, to the most urgent questions that the industry is currently facing. And this is all around technology. The answer is not in what we know today. The answer in what, uh, is in what we can develop for the future. This is the place where these ideas uh, get brought together. That's the place where we actually provide the proof of concept, where we have in simultaneously uh, the activities going to ensure that all of these ideas will not just be for the purpose of a whiteboard, that these ideas will finally be in order to change uh, the mobility space uh, in India. But uh, I think our aspiration is that this powerhouse uh, of uh, research and technology is going to provide solutions which go far beyond uh, the applications of Jaguar Land Rover for the global markets uh, and uh, the solutions at Tata Motors for primarily the domestic Indian market. Well, we're at the NIIC building. It's on Warwick University campus. Um, it, today is the official opening ceremony and we're wel welcoming welcoming um, HRH, Prince of Wales, to the building today. Um, this building is a, a culmination of about 10 years worth of work now between uh, Warwick University, uh, Warwick Manufacturing Group, Jaguar Land Rover and Tata Motors and uh, UK government to, to, to fund this fantastic facility. So this new building has got some great new uh, facilities for us. It's got the new engineering hall that we're in today. We've got uh, electrical laboratories, we've got connectivity labs, we've got attribute area, we've got virtual reality facility, we've got design studios, and we've got a, mod a new modeling shop and NC um, cutting, uh, with NC cutting capability. Well, Tata Universe will redefine electric vehicles uh, for, uh, for India. Um, this facility is helping us develop the EV vehicles of the future. 
uh, for, for the Indian market and bringing the greatest minds together from automotive and from academia in order to do that. This building has been designed around collaboration. It's got many joint working areas in order to bring the automotive engineers together with uh, members of academia uh, to share ideas and develop new solutions for the future. Its whole purpose is around sharing ideas, even if that's just through general conversations in the corridor, to actually providing the working facilities that we, where we can all work together and actually see those ideas through to full working solutions for our new vehicles. I personally have been here through the uh, first moving in of this building. Um, was, I was involved in the, uh, the initial design of the facility as well. And so from that design to actually moving in and getting people working on new products for the future is immensely satisfying. Uh, this building will be used to redefine the way that we introduce electric vehicles into the Indian, Indian market. So I'm enormously proud to be here at this wonderful day to open this wonderful institution where we're really going to change the future. The vision of Lord Bhattacharya over many years being fulfilled from today. So the whole point of this centre is to facilitate collaboration. We're at Manufacturing Group right at the centre but working with key partners right through the supply chain. The vision really around here is about smart motor city. How do we create the future through the collaborations that are going to happen here today? Funding has come from private sector, some from government, some from WMG itself, resourced to produce the facility for the future. Lord Bhattacharya came with the vision of this about 20 years ago. Through that period of time it has changed, it has evolved, but the concept and the practice is exactly what he wanted at the start. A collaborative space, changing the future, thinking about the rest of the century, not what we've done in the, in the previous century. National Automotive Innovation Centre here in the Lord Bhattacharya building is absolutely the heart of our region, of our transport work, of our employment work and of our identity as a city, as a smart motor city. What we are going to be able to do here, working with partners, is really make sure that Coventry, Warwickshire and the West Midlands are remaining at the centre of automotive developments for the next 50 years. Oh, I'm absolutely delighted. I think it's going to be a wonderful day today, uh, the culmination of a five-year vision to create this beautiful and inspiring place. I think the NAIC will very much impact on the uh, net zero agenda in the UK, the journey that the country's going on there. The automotive industry is really at the pioneering forefront of that and the work we do here around electrification, around autonomy, where we'll have a thousand scientists, technologists, engineers all together, will really drive that agenda forward. It's very much a, a relationship, a collaboration between three organisations, WMG at the University of Warwick, Jaguar Land Rover, Tata Motors European Technical Centre. We've worked together for many, many years, but then came together around five years ago with this shared vision. We've now had £150 million capital investment into this space where we can undertake research, we can undertake education, we can undertake knowledge transfer in here. We've had a very good £15 million investment which really catalyzed this from the government, from Research England there, through the UK Partnership Investment Fund, Research Investment Fund. And what we achieve here is actually a critical mass and that means that with the open innovation nature of the university, the research here, the strength of the industry partners, we're already attracting the global tier one suppliers onto the science park alongside us. Oh, and Professor Lord Bhattacharya will be absolutely delighted at what's been created here. It was his vision five years ago. It was his baby, working very closely with Mr Tata in that vision. And the way it's actually come to life now, he was with us all the way through the journey, so he only passed away a year ago now, and the building was there. We were kitting it out, fitting it out at that time. So he'll be delighted, and there's many old friends coming here today that will be sharing that with him. In the National Automotive Innovation Centre, very much a focus around electrification, around autonomy, working on the Automotive Council's agenda through to 2050 about how we achieve zero carbon. They'll be highlighted in the visits today. I'd also though like to mention things we do around digitalisation, digital manufacturing. For example, work we're doing with Lear, a major tier one supplier, where we're working on automotive seats and how we look to automate and inspect that process.
The, um, I mean, the NAIC is very much focused on an agenda of net zero and carbon reduction. Uh, the automotive sector has been the first to embrace that. That's now spreading into rail, into aerospace. So what we're doing here in automotive, the next stage of that is taking that into the aerospace sector so we can actually achieve the government's targets of net zero, but also what we all want as, as citizens and a community from that. The, the, the environment, as you see, is absolutely beautiful, uh, but is also sustainable. So in its construction, it's achieved the BREAM Excellent rating, uh, and then it's an EPC Energy rating A. So the building itself has been sustainable to create. A lot of natural materials you see in here as well, but also on its operations, it's sustainable on the energy usage. I think the other thing, though, is, is the environment for people that are working here, where we've actually got an open and welcoming environment, so it's actually encouraging a community, it's encouraging well-being there. I think the final point is actually the inspiring nature of the building as well. We want the next generation of youngsters to want to go into the automotive sector, want to really grasp engineering, and the building is an uplifting space to achieve that. So we're delighted today to be opening the facility. We've been preparing for over five years for this, and this facility will give us a fantastic capability to bring together companies, students, supply chain, academics, to do some great innovative work. Here at the university, we focus heavily around electric and autonomous vehicle technology. We've been researching here for over a decade in those areas. What NAIC does is it lets us bring our research in contact with industry and create products that can be on the road in a very short space of time. So as a university, we've got two main outputs. The first one is technologies that go into industry, and the second one is skills, and that's in the form of people. And one of the great things about NAIC is that we can bring our students, some of whom are undergraduates, some of whom are graduates, some of whom are people from industry, and we can bring them in contact with the best research teams in the UK so we can help them learn quickly and then go out into the workplace and deliver great new products for industry. To have this level of collaboration between university and lots of different companies is very unusual. And this whole facility, even its architecture, has been designed to facilitate that. So it's difficult to get a sense of scale with the NAIC. It's a massive building. This engineering hall that we're in at the moment looks impressive enough, but this is just one small part of the large suite of facilities that we've got. And that means that we've got people here working on styling and design of vehicles, as well as people working on things like the powertrain architecture, the control, and then on the softer side, looking at how these vehicles will be sold and marketed and used by people. Lord Bhattacharya was a man who always thought big and his focus was very much on bringing academic knowledge into industry so that we can produce innovative products and scale up activity here in the UK. It's difficult to get a grasp of size of the facility. Even this engineering hall that we're in today, which looks large, is just one of a small number of activities that's taking place here. And that gives us a huge span of activity from styling and design through powertrain engineering and then thinking through the later business stages like how we get supply chains in place I'm very excited to be here at the official opening of the NAIC. I think it represents a lot of exciting uh, and creative uh, ventures for a number of the partners of WMG and the University of Warwick. Mobility is changing and it will be exciting and beneficial to everybody and working on it and collaboration is going to be hugely important and that's what the building symbolises. We work with engineers at all different levels and over all disciplines. Engineering has changed over the years and now it's probably more exciting than ever. We've moved from the need for sort of mechanical engineers through electrical and electronic. Now there's a need for people with expertise in software, wireless communication, psychology, human factors. It's a really exciting time to be an engineer. And we need to inspire people at all stages of their learning and their career, from children right the way through to experienced uh, employees. Mobility is changing. We're moving from thinking about sort of cars through to actually mobility. And therefore, it's important that we try to um, equip people with all the skills necessary to think about this bigger picture. Society is going to benefit. We're going to end up with safer, more comfortable, more convenient, more energy efficient transport. And to achieve those benefits for everybody, it requires lots of skills and disciplines coming together. And therefore, we need to work in partnership with many companies, with many disciplines. But it can be an exciting future for everybody. Vehicles and technologies and services for mobility are all changing. It's really important that we make sure that they're dependable, that they're safe, secure, robust and reliable. It's important we, that they work with actual people, that they're optimised, that they're desirable, that everybody is wanting these new technologies and services and vehicles. And actually the business model is changing as well.